Hello, my name is Raul Garcia Castro, and in this video, we are going to talk about the foundations of ontologies. To do so, we have to start talking about uh, the branch of artificial intelligence that is knowledge representation. Knowledge representation deals with how to represent facts about the world in a way that computers can understand. This branch of artificial intelligence has a tight relationship with all the branches in a lower or greater step. In the Knowledge Sharing Initiative, it was already mentioned this need of using reusable components in order to interchange them and reduce them in order to support interoperability. Here the main idea was that we could share between different systems the same declarative knowledge, problem solving techniques, and reasoning services. One of the classic representations that we find is the semantic triangle by Odgen and Richards, where we have some entity in the real world that is called a referent. And an actor that, when thinking about this entity, it has some thought, some reference, person, thinks of this entity in some particular way. For example, this person thinks that he or she is in a light bulb. But when we have to communicate uh, and to talk with others about what we are seeing, for example, what we use is symbols. For example, we could represent what we are seeing with the symbol bulb. And here is the key part that we have. We need to have the symbols uh, in a way that can facilitate communication and that can facilitate interoperability. And for this, we need that these symbols are as expressive and as informative as possible. If not, you can imagine that Using a simple description, such as bulb, any other actor can take these symbols and can understand any other thing, because we are not giving any context, any semantics to our symbols. And this is one of the goals of knowledge representation. Then, when we talk about knowledge representation, the first thing that we need is some knowledge representation language that will provide me with the syntax that I, need, that I need to represent these symbols. But we have already seen that with the syntax, it's not enough. We have to be able of defining the semantics, the meaning of these symbols. For that, we need some underlying logic okay, that ensures that every actor is interpreting correctly all my information. And then we have what is called a knowledge base that is composed by the ontology, the data model, that is usually combining with some instances that are defined according to this ontology. And when we talk about knowledge representation, we usually uh, also talk about reason. Thanks to this semantics, to this underlying logic, we are able of getting inferences over my data, okay? inferences uh, that are not explicit in my data with the benefit that these inferences are shared also between different actors. So we have introduced the term ontology, but what is an ontology? So this is one of the uh, most famous definitions of ontology from a student at all. Um, that says that an ontology is a formal, explicit specification of a shared conceptualization. And in this short definition, we already uh, have a lot of information about what an ontology is. Of course, it is a conceptualization, and what we saw that in the beginning, okay? It is a model that represents some part of the world, but the key part here is that this is shared, okay? This is not the view of one individual, of one organization, but this is shared between multiple actors, okay? I think this is what we want. On the other hand, of course, this is an ex explicit specification. 
All the parts of my ontology are defined in an explicit way and in a formal way. This is key, the formality as we saw before. If we go to other environments, we can see different terms from, for ontology. For example, if we look in the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, the definition of ontology, they talk about vocabularies. But we can see that they are talking about the same thing. The terms that we use in a particular application, the relationships, the, cons the constraints, and it highlights that the ontologies, the vocabularies, are the basic building blocks for inferencing in the web, in the open scenario of the web. So here we can see that when we talk about ontology, we have a, a different approaches according to the expressiveness that we want to achieve with, with our ontology. For example, this is the ontology spectrum defined by Lassil and McGuinness, where we can see from the left, uh, from very informal approaches, okay, with low semantics, to other approaches that are increasingly adding semantic, so they add more inferencing capabilities, constraint checking capabilities. So we have a wide range of expressiveness that we can use when we define ontologies. When we talk about the knowledge base, we have to differentiate also about the knowledge level and the data level. In the knowledge level, we have our ontologies. These are abstract data models. They don't refer to any particular thing in the world, but to classes of things that we will see next. And then we have, we have our data. These are the individuals of interest in different scenarios that they are usually defined according to the ontologies, and it's the ontology that provides the meaning of this data. The main components of ontologies are the concepts that are usually organized in taxonomies, attributes of these concepts, relationships between concepts and axioms. And we are going to talk about this a bit now. Concepts, also known as classes, are sets, types of objects, sets of objects that describe types of things. Usually we expect for these concepts to be instantiated for specific entities. We can see these generic concepts such as streets, sensors, or qualities. When we talk about attributes, are attributes that allow me describing further these concepts. These properties, features, characteristics, with some values that will have either simple or complex data types. For example, we could say about a sensor that has some name, some revision date, or some height. We have also relationship between concepts. We can have ad hoc relationships. For example, we can define that a street contains a sensor, that a sensor measures quality, and we can have other type of relationships, such as hierarchical relationships that can even allow multi hierarchical relationships, concept partitions, disjoint partitions, meriological relationships, such as part of relationships, or even enary relationships. Then we have the axioms. These are the statements that in some domain are said to be true. For example, we could enrich our, our example stating that the contains property is transitive. So if we have a city that contains a street and a street that contains a sensor, we could infer that the city also contains the sensor. For example, we could further describe a sensor as something that measures at least one quality. These actions will allow us to define these restrictions that will empower our reasoning and help us in checking also uh, our model and our data. And finally, we have the instances. 
These are the specific entities in the world that are represented by concepts. And we already mentioned that these entities may be concrete things in the world, such as a lamppost, or some abstract entities, such as the quality of illuminance or the city of Madrid. Here, the important part is that if I have the data, but I don't have the knowledge, I won't be able of fully using their data or even of interpreting the data correctly. For example, unless I have an anthology such as the one that we saw in the previous slides, I cannot infer only with the data that Madrid contains a lamppost or even the lamppost that we don't have its type but if we had the ontology, since it is measuring some quality, we could infer that this is essential. So we have plenty of benefits uh, of using ontologies. They will facilitate data integration and interoperability. We have data coming from different formats, different data sources, using different schemas, languages, it can give us this ab abstraction layer that we can use. Also, we already mentioned about the reasoning capabilities, the inferencing capabilities, but also highlighting that different actors with the same data and the same ontologies will achieve the same conclusions over our data. The ontologies help me in providing this semantics, this meaning, this context to my information, will help me in this ambiguating in preventing errors, misunderstandings when using the data. They will facilitate the reuse of the data, having our data described in a semantic way. And also, in, if I have data sets, they will facilitate the maintenance of these data sets. And finally, ontologies are the mechanism used in these open scenarios um, for representing the semantics of data, such as the web of data.